Hello, welcome to a video tutorial about slit scanning. In particular, writing a slit scanning application with code. With code written in the processing programming development environment. And in my follow-up video, I'll also show you how to do this in the browser in JavaScript using P5.js. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is slit scan. So this is not an original idea of mine. There are countless examples of slit scanning throughout the history of photography, filmmaking, computational design. And I want to point you towards this online catalog written by Golan Levin. I will include a link in maybe a YouTube annotation or in the description below. Take a look and read about uh, all the different kinds of examples of slit scanning and where it's appeared throughout uh, the history of art and all sorts of other things. So first, let's just talk about what slit scanning is. So what slit scanning involves is it involves a source image. You can see I have a live video coming from a webcam over here. And it involves taking slices of that video and putting them next to each other over time. What do I mean by that? Maybe if I draw a diagram over here on this whiteboard, that will help make it more clear. So let's say this is a video. And this is a canvas. Now this thing is happening over time. We're getting image after image after image, frame by frame by frame in this video image. And what I want to do is only ever take a single column of pixels. I want, and I could take a single column from anywhere in that image. I'm going to choose to take it from the center. Probably makes the most sense for the sort of classic slit scanning effect. So I want to take this, just this column of pixels and I want to place this column right here. Then the next moment in time, I want to take this column again and I want to place it right next to it. And the next moment in time, I want to take that column again and place it right next to it. So those columns of pixels are going to be placed next to each other moment after moment after moment. And if I come back over here, you can see, by the way, the, that the, the center, I'm like, what am I looking at? The center pixels are all green. So if I'm not standing in the webcam's view, you'll just see a wash of green moving across the screen. If I were to stand in the center, but very, very still, you can see that same column of pixels is being copied again and again and again. Now as I turn my head, the effects change. As I move my head in, the effects change even more. As I do <laughs> the, what's this called, the, the wave? The break boogie, <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> that was not that interesting effect. I could, if I move at the exact speed of the slit scanning effect, try to get almost, and I knocked over a light, everything's fine. <laughs> um, uh, you can see almost right over here, like an exact almost view of my face. So you get the idea. Hopefully you now have a sense of what the slit scanning effect is. Let's figure out how to program it. So uh, obviously, it's there. Uh, Golan actually includes right here some code for doing this in processing. I'm going to uh, write that code from scratch uh, right now. Um, I'm going to leave that up there for reference. Let's open up processing. Uh, that's the version that was running, but let's make a new blank sketch. So I want to do this entirely from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to call this slit scan uh, tutorial, and I'm going to put this on the desktop. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get that video image into processing. And the way that we do that is by making a capture object. And I'm going to call it video, and I'm going to write the setup function. I'm going to write the draw function. I'm going to make, so let's have the, let's start with um, low resolution, just to kind of make things simple. Let's start with uh, thinking of the video coming in at 320 by 240. And so I want to make then the canvas 240 pixels high, but a lot wider. And I could make it any width, right? Because I'm just, I have as many, I have, it could be as wide as many times I want to copy the, that column of pixels across. So I'm going to say size, and let's just start, go with 640 by 240. Then I want to make a new capture object. Uh, the arguments that the capture object needs in order to connect to the camera are the keyword this. I, would love, I could make a whole video just about the keyword this, and I probably have, but this is just referencing this particular sketch so the camera knows to communicate with this sketch. And then I want to give a width and a height. So there's lots of other things you can do when initializing the capture object if you have multiple cameras or you want a different frames per second, but by default, this is all I want to do. Then I need to say video.start. I want to start capturing from the camera. Now you'll notice 
I've got some red squiggly lines here. It doesn't seem to know what capture is. So vi the processing stuff for video, capture movie, comes from the video library, which isn't necessarily installed with processing by default. I do have a video that I will refer to you to. It's where it shows how to install the video library. I already have it installed, but I do need to have the import statement. So I need to write import processing.video.star. So once I have that, you can see my errors go away. If I were to hit run, uh, a sketch would come up and it wouldn't have anything in it. You can't see this, but there is a green light on my laptop showing that the camera is being accessed. And we could kind of be sure about that by just saying image.video 0 comma 0. And I would run it again and we would see the video image in the canvas. It's not there. Why is it not there? It's not there. The reason it's not there is we forgot a crucial detail. I need to continuously read from the camera. So even though the camera is running, I have a green light, I need to read from the camera. So I'm going to create a capture event function and if, uh, a callback, an event callback. I'm going to give it uh, one argument, a capture object, and I'm going to say video.read in there. So what this is doing is it's saying this is an event callback that it says every time there is a new image from the camera available, read that image. So this is your basic setup of how to get live video into processing. Create a capture object, set its size, put the callback in, draw the video image. So we've got our setup going here, but I don't actually want to draw the video image. What I want to do is copy just a single column of pixels from the center of the video and put it here on the canvas in the processing window. So how do I do that? Well, it turns out there is a function in processing called copy. Why don't we just go to the browser for a second, Chrome, and I'm going to say copy, I'm going to Google copy and processing. And hopefully we're going to get this page. And this is where you're going to see kind of how it works. And you can see, uh, where is it? Uh, you can see like, whoa, this is crazy. This is what the copy function does. It takes like eight numbers. That seems kind of insane. Uh, another thing that's important here, well, well, also it has this argument called a source. So what I need to do with the copy function, I'm going to come back to processing, come back to this window, I'm going to come back over here, is figure out how does the copy function work in this context. So the copy function needs nine, we're going to use nine arguments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The first argument, the very first argument, is the thing I want to copy from. And what do I want to copy from? I want to copy from that video itself, the source video. Now, even though I made it seem like it's going to be this overly complex thing, I need nine arguments, it's actually quite simple. This is just the rectangle that I want to copy from. An x and a y and a width and a height. So what part of this do I want to copy from? Maybe I just want these pixels. And then this is the rectangle in the destination, which is just the canvas by default of where I want to copy to. So I could actually copy a rectangle of pixels like this and then copy it to a rectangle of pixels like this and stretch it all the way out. So you can use copy for a variety of things. But actually, all I want to do is copy one column of pixels from here to here. So I should be able to do that. It, it, the rectangle, it is a rectangle. It will have an x, y, the top left. The height will be the high, full height of the video, and the width will just be one. One column of pixels. One a width of one. So let's try to do that and get that copying over here. OK, so I'm back over here. And what I want to do now in draw is say, uh, let me give myself some space down here. And I'm going to type in copy. I want to copy from the video. Now I want the center. So I want video.width divided by 2, just, just, for the, um, just to make things a little bit more concise. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that in a separate variable. So I want to get the center, the top, the top, the width divided by 2, comma 0 is that point there. Now I want my rectangle that I'm copying to be one pixel wide. and the full, the video dot height. I'm just putting these, it's really unnecessary to put these in separate variables, but I would like you to be able to see the code a little bit better. There's just so many arguments here. So you can see that's my source rectangle. And where do I want to put it? Let's put it at 0, 0, 1, h. So that's where I'm copying it to, right? The top left of the canvas, one pixel wide, all that same height, because they both have the same height, 240, 240. 
So let's run this. And we should see now, it's going. You can see, there it is. Look at that. That's one column of pixels. You know, I put my thumb over the camera, it's black. I move away, it looks green. That's one column of pixels, copying always to there. Now, I don't want it to copy always to there. I want it to copy there, and then I want to move to the right, and then I want to move to the right again, and then I want to move to the right again. So that's easy, right? All I need is this destination spot. Instead of it always being zero, I need it to be a moving target along the x-axis. So I can add a variable, a global variable. I'll call it x. It starts at 0. I'm going to put that right here. And then I'm going to say x equals x plus 1. So every frame, after you copy that column of pixels, increase x by 1. And we should have that slit scanning effect. Whee! And you can see, hey, why does it look so much faster than it was doing before? Maybe because I have like 320 by 240. So let's make it, just to sort of see, let's make the size 1280 by 640, uh, 480, uh, sorry, 480, and make the capture 640 by 480 so we can see it at higher resolution. And we should see here, interesting. I don't know what, uh, it, my code is a little bit different than Golan's. It, to me, it looks like it's running faster than it was before, but I don't, don't specifically recall if <laughs> maybe I just imagine it. So you can see the slit scanning effect happening. It's working. <laughs> I can like do all sorts of things that have nothing that I don't know what's going on. So that's how to make a slit scan. Ah, look at that. It ends. Maybe I want to go back to the beginning. So uh, it ends, and maybe I want to go back to the beginning, which I could say if x is greater than width, then x goes back to zero. I could also use the modulus operator, which you might have seen, and I think. This concludes how to make a slit scan in processing. So in the next video, I'm going to make a version of this uh, in JavaScript in the browser, and we'll see how it performs. And then I will also want to try to add some other effects to it. So I might make a third video to do some different stuff with it. But if you're thinking of something to try, what happens if you were to make your slit scan go vertically? Could you make a radial slit scan that goes around in a kind of a radial path? <laughs> um, what happens if you don't always put the frames next to each other, but you kind of like cycle them in different ways? There's probably a lot of variations you could try to see what kinds of effects you get. Thanks for watching, and uh, write your questions in the comments, subscribe. <laughs> what are the things you're supposed to say at the end of the video? I don't know, something like that.